Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to PWLM Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Bishop James Manigault. So excited to have you on with us. Come on, like, share this video. Let me know you're in the room. We'll be getting started in 30 seconds. Hey, praise the Lord, Sister Pam. Come on, give him praise. Hey. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So excited to be on with you on this wonderful Wednesday as we dive into our Bible study tonight. Come on, you don't want to miss it. Prayer and fasting. We're going to be talking about prayer and fasting. Come on, the truth revealed. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. You don't want to miss it. Come on in the room. Let's have a quick word of prayer, and then we will get started. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for what you've done, Lord God, even inside of this opportunity. God, for those that are tuning in, God, open up a blessing, God. Reveal revelation, insight, wisdom, knowledge, Lord God, that we may be able to grow thereby, even as your word declares, rightly dividing the word of truth. We thank you for the power and the anointing that we both experience and feel right now. And we give you the glory, honor, and the praise. For we know, God, your hand is not so short, but you're reaching through the airwaves. You're reaching across God's social media. Bodies are being healed. God, minds are being delivered. God, and we will walk in the newness of life. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, somebody, give them a praise just for a few seconds. Hallelujah. Watching the numbers as we climb. Come on, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm feeling good tonight. Hey, ha! Ah, come on. Work day is over. I will bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, I don't know about you, but I am excited and God is in control. We have been in the series on prayer and fasting because we've entered into our time. Many churches around the country come into this time of what we call fasting and praying um, at the beginning of the new year. Um, we know that we've already entered into the new year um, and that was last year, actually. Um, we go by the Judea calendar, actually the Hebraic calendar um, and not the uh, our calendar that we currently use in the United States. But I want to kind of get into the message tonight. Praise the Lord. Just making sure that I am live. I see some things that may look stuck, but we're going to press on. If you can hear me, somebody type amen. All right. Um, if you can hear me, somebody type amen, and then I will move forward. All right. I see someone typing amen. So I want to get into this uh, context of scripture. And last week, we dove into our fasting um, and the need to fast. What is fasting? Um, fasting unveiled 
uh, because I believe the, the lack of understanding of fasting is the reason why many people don't do it. But today we're going to be dealing with uh, a topic of scripture. Uh, many of you know it, Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21, which will be the key scripture. But we're going to be diving into a couple of different scriptures to go in with it. Um, and the Bible says in Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21, um, how be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And I want you to know that your fasting has not been in vain. I have been in with you for those that are seeking God um, and seeking the Lord to do something greater. I am in it with you uh, and I will not get off of my face. I've made a declaration to the Lord um, that in this year, this year, we're going to uh, break some things. We're going to break up some, 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 some strongholds that have been tying families down that have been literally seeping in. And this is what Jesus spoke about, um, with this message. He says, listen, and this kind, there are some strongholds that you will not merely get out, uh, simply with a dance, with a, a, a shout, with a declaration. Um, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting, and, and it is what fasting does to us. All right, I said that there is a struggle. There is a, a struggle um, between the body and the spirit, all right? And they are battling for the soul, all right? They're battling for the soul. Um, the body, the flesh, and the spirit are in competition and battling for the soul. Um, they want to control the soul. And we talked about what the soul was, all right, for those that um, were not with us. But the body is the flesh. Then we went into the soul. The soul is the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, all right? Those things that have been trained and cultivated by uh, our outside through the five senses, our soulless realm. All right. And then the spirit man, um, which is completely different. And so this is why we read in Romans chapter seven and in Romans chapter eight, the apostle Paul saying that, listen, I am at war. I am at war with myself. This ain't got nothing to do with the demon. Praise God. This ain't got nothing to do with the spirit. Uh, this has to do with me. I am, I am at war with myself. And there are many of us that are at war with ourself. We are at war with our flesh uh, because the flesh, the body wants to go one direction and the spirit wants to go another direction and it's tearing the soul apart because um, the Bible says again, to whom we yield our members to. If I yield my soul, if I yield my eyes, my mind, my body, my mouth, whatever, uh, unto my flesh, the Bible says that's the servant that I become. Um, and this is why, again, there is a struggle. This is why there's a battle taking place. But we're going to dive into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, bring revelation, insight, and wisdom. So in Matthew, the ninth chapter, uh, we read that John's disciples um, came to Jesus. Um, and, and, and I'm sorry, in Matthew, the 17th chapter, and then in Mark, the ninth chapter, we read that, uh, you know, Christ's disciples came to Jesus and they asked about fasting, right? While Jesus' disciples did not. And that's Matthew chapter nine. And Jesus answered, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom was with them? So we find Christ with them. That's Matthew chapter nine, verse 15. We find Christ with the disciples and John's disciples come and they're like, hey, we're fasting. Um, we're doing all of these things, but we don't see your disciples fasting. And Jesus made it plain to them. He said, can they? He said, in other words, uh, they're with me right now. And so the need, they don't really get the need to fast. Why? Because anytime they run into an issue or a problem, they just run right back to me. All right. But he says the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then shall they fast. And that's Matthew chapter nine and verse 15. And Jesus was taken away from them. And guess what? The disciples did fast. All right. Fast forward. Fast forward. So now it is recorded in Matthew chapter 17. In verse 14 through 21, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through 21, you can write that down. 
in Mark chapter 9, verse 29, that a father brought his son. So let's get this scenario. We see a father bringing his son uh, that was possessed by a demon, by a devil to the disciples. Long story short, um, they were not right, um, but then Jesus was. So later the disciples come to Christ and they ask a question. Lord, we've been trying to cast out this demon, but nothing seems to be working. I'm going to bring revelation here. I, I pray that you pay attention. Uh, just like many of us, there are strongholds that lie within our life. And some of us have been trying to move this stronghold. Anybody ever tried moving a stronghold that seemed unmovable? I want to I want to clarify that. Seemed unmovable. Because with Christ all things are possible. And I'm going to break this down tonight. I pray that you have your Bibles, I pray that you have your pens. And your papers. And I pray that you like and share the video. Because I'm telling you right now, we're about to dive into some stuff, y'all. All right? So the disciples bring the boy to Christ. And look, we just been trying. We can't deliver the child. Christ lays hands, speaks. The spirit goes out. All right? The disciples want to know, all right, how were we not able to do that? And Jesus responds to them. This stronghold, this demon, this kind cannot be moved, all right, come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So in other words, he says, listen, this type of stronghold, this type of uh, 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 demonic activity just won't go away by a dance. You can't move it by a shout. This has to be through prayer and fasting. And I'm going to get into that because I want to break this scripture down because there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding when it comes to this scripture. Because now we got people that are fasting and praying, fasting and praying, but still nothing seems to be happening. Anybody but me ever been there before? You fasted and prayed and, and, and you were like, God, I'm fasting, I'm giving my time, I'm giving this, and it still don't look like it's going to move is still putting up a fight. What is going on? All right, let's get understanding to this scripture. And I talked about exegesis. I talked about understanding. The Bible says, and all by getting, getting understanding. Um, many of us were taught that, you know, maybe we weren't fasting long enough, or maybe we weren't praying hard enough. All right, um, but I want to bring revelation to this scripture. If you've ever tried to find Matthew chapter 17 and verse 21 and a lot of other different uh, variations of Bibles like the New Living Translation, like the NIV. Uh, there are, I, it's not there. They have, uh, you know, and this kind go if not out, but by prayer, but they don't include fasting. And there's a reason why. We're going to break all of this down. I'm telling you right now, you need to know why. All right, because... Um, you know, when I was trying to uh, cast out demons in my, praise the Lord, younger life, when I was first coming into ministry, and I didn't understand. I used to see men and women of God casting them out, and I was like, man, seems so simple. They just laid hands or spoke to the thing, and it went away. And I knew they were people of fasting and prayer, but I didn't understand the complete understanding of the word. So let's read Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14 through 21. Somebody shout, I'm going to get revelation tonight. Come on, somebody type, I'm going to get revelation tonight. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14 through 21, so that we can get understanding with this scripture. That's right. Amen. I'm going to get revelation tonight. All right. So Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14 through 21 and the Bible says, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. 
And I brought him unto thy disciples, verse 16, and they could not cure him. I'm reading from the King James Version. Verse 17, then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. Pay attention to that. All right. O faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. The child was cured from that very hour. Verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart as we would and said, why could we not cast him out? Lord Jesus, why couldn't we cast him out? You know, we seem like we did the same thing you did. You know, we, we, we spoke to the demon and, and said, come out and nothing happened. So why, what was the difference between you and us? Pay attention. Verse 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, watch again, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, watch what he just said, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. If you're writing, if you're, uh, you know, even taking notes in your Bible, underline because of your unbelief. Underline because of your unbelief, because he gives the answer. He did not say it was their fasting and prayer that comes latter. He says, and Jesus said, they asked in verse 19, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus responds, because of your unbelief. All right. You shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. 21. How be it? This stronghold, this dimension, this thing cannot come out but by prayer and fasting. All right. Go to Mark chapter 9, verse 17 through 29. All right. Same story, same story um, from a different angle, all right? Mark chapter 9, verse 17 through 29, amen. And one of the multitude in verse 17, Mark chapter 9, verse 17 through 29, and one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought him unto thy son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out and they could not. So one, we find that the spirit is guiding this boy. He is possessed. All right. This spirit is taking him and wheresoever he taketh him, he is leaving this boy. All right. Verse 19. He answered him and said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. 20, and they, and they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. One, the spirit saw. What was the spirit looking at? Because the spirit saw many people, but only when he saw Christ did the spirit tear immediately and fell to the ground. Jesus hadn't said nothing. He hadn't did nothing. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway, the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. The spirit began to act up because it knew what time it was. All right. I need you to hear me and hear me well. When spirits look, they look beyond the dimension of the flesh. What that spirit saw was what Jesus did on Mount Transfiguration. The spirit was not afraid of his flesh, but the spirit was afraid of what he saw beyond that veil. Oh, hallelujah. What is behind your veil? What is behind your veil? My God, have mercy. When the demon looked, it was not looking at the boy or the man it was what it was behind because it looked at John, it looked at Matthew, it looked at all of the other folk. 
and it did not tear, neither did it foam, neither did it tremble. But the moment it looked at Christ, because it is a spirit, it looked beyond the physical flesh and saw its demise. What are you talking about, Bishop? We're going to get there. Follow me. All right. And <laughs> he asked his father in verse 21, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child. So this is why we have to be careful because as a child, this demon entered in. It doesn't give us an understanding of how the demon entered in. It just, it says, hallelujah, that we know that as a child, the spirit came in. This is why, again, we got to watch our children. We got to protect our children. I know we're fasting and we're praying, but the question is, are you anointing yourself? Are you anointing your children every day as you fast? Um, praise God. That's what the Bible says. And when you fast, anoint thy head with oil. Anoint. There's a reason for the anointing, but that goes back to faith. We'll be talking about that too. All right. So are you anointing yourself? And the Bible says, and oftentimes it have cast him into the fire and into the waters, verse 22, to destroy him. So the spirit has an objective and that is the destruction of the child. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, watch, underline that, underline that. That's verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, just underline, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Somebody type all things are possible. To him that Believe it. I'm going to type this in. We need, we need to get this in. This is a foundational teaching. And straightway, the father of the child cried out. 24. I don't care who's around me. I don't care who's watching me. I don't care. I ain't got time for you to be concerned about uh, I'm being too noisy or loud. Jesus has just said, if you can believe, and the father says, with tears in his eyes, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. God, I'm being honest, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him. And enter no more into him. My God have mercy. You better understand, all right? So I, I could do a whole teaching and a sermon on that verse alone. Jesus, hallelujah, in verse 25, saw that the people came running together and he rebuked the spirit. First thing that you have to do, engaging that spirit, rebuke him. We'll talk about this in a minute. Saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit. I'm not going to speak to the boy. I'm speaking now to the unseen thing. You dumb and deaf spirit. How does he know he's dumb and deaf? By the spirit of God, I charge thee. I rebuke thee. Come out of him with authority he did speak and enter no more. I am sealing this vessel. I'm telling you right now, you can no longer have access to this body. I, I, I command it. Huh. I'll get to that part, man. I'm about to... Man, I'm telling you right now, you better get ready. All right, so, and the spirit, verse 26, cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when, verse 28, he was coming to the house his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast them out? 29, and Jesus said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. All right, so we have just read the scripture. Let's break it down, all right? Let's break it down. Let's get into this thing because I'm telling you right now, 
Uh, praise God. We're going to dive into this deep. All right. So I pray again. You have your pens and your paper. Come on, somebody type. I got my pen and paper ready. Come on, I'm ready. I got my I got my phone ready, Bishop. I'm taking notes. Come on, somebody let me know they're taking notes. The reason why the Bible says the reason my people are destroyed is because we lack knowledge. We 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 go off of impulse. We go after what we saw. Uh and and, and when I first started, you know, praying to God and he was leading me to cast out spirits, I tried emulating what I had saw. I saw uh, men like Brother David Terrell, Prophet Raven, I saw him do it. I saw Bishop Reynolds and, and those that were uh, men and women of God. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm about to give you something. I want you to understand. Ain't nothing wrong with looking at folk. But if you don't know what they know, you will mess yourself up. If you want to know, ask questions. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Get out. Get out, spirits. Get out of my house. And you wondering why they're not responding? We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. So let's pay attention. All right. So one of the first things I want to deal with is Jesus response, right, to the disciples and those watching. At the heart of prayer and fasting lies the key, which is faith. I'm going to say that again. At the heart of prayer and fasting lies the key, which is faith. Write this down. Type it out, somebody, for me. Prayer and fasting are expressions of faith. Come on, write that down. Type it out. Prayer and fasting are expressions of faith. This is why. It's hard for some people to fast and pray, all right? This is why it's so hard for some people to fast and pray because it deals with faith. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive in deep to this thing I want to teach tonight. Stay with me if you got time. If not, go back and catch the replay. But we need to understand this. Watch what he says, and I want you to write this down. Again, prayer and fasting are expressions of faith. Prayer and fasting are expressions of faith. Thank you, Sister Nick. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. So what? In Matthew, Jesus said faith. Watch. Faith was the heart of the issue of the disciples' failure to cast the demons out. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 17. He did not say prayer and fasting till after he said faith. Watch. Because what you don't believe you won't do or you can't do. We'll get into that. So fasting is not just missing a meal. If I miss a meal, that's not fasting. If I, if, if I just say some words in a prayer-like manner, that ain't prayer. I can do all of that stuff, but that's not praying and fasting. What I do in prayer and fasting is directly influenced by my faith or my belief. What I believe directs my prayer and what I believe directs my fasting. So Jesus says at the heart of the issue, it was faith. And he did not say their primary issue again was the lack of prayer and fasting. So the true error the foundation of their failure was they did not sufficiently trust the power of God to work through them. That was the problem. Hear me. They did not trust the power of God to work through them. This is why so many of us fail when it comes to casting out demonic spirits. Pay attention. The devil does not mind you believing in God, but he does not want you to believe in the God in you, that God can use you, that God can, his power can flow through you to command that spirit because it's not about a gift. I don't care whether you are an apostle. I don't care whether you are a prophet. I don't care whether you are an evangelist. I don't care whether you are, that's not where it lies. Where it lies is what you believe. Let's get into it. 
So the problem <laughs> is that they didn't trust the power of God. Thank you, Sister Danielle, to work through them. I want you to think about that thing. Come on, somebody type, am I trusting the power of God to work through me? The reason we are so afraid to engage and allow the kingdom to manifest is because we are afraid to allow the power of God to work through us. You know, here comes that, that, that doubt. God, if I do it, will it work? Well, what does God's word say? See, you can't, you and I can't go how about we feel. Jesus gave us some words that we're going to bring out in this Bible, all right? That he said, if you abide, if you do what my word declares, whatever you ask, it will be done, all right? So, again, the air of their foundation of their failure is that they did not sufficiently trust the power of God to work through them. And Jesus was clear that nothing would be impossible for them if they had faith even as small as a mustard seed. All right, Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 31 through 32, uh, verse 7 and chapter 17, verse 20. He says, if you have faith, even the grain, the size of a mustard seed. And again, watch what faith, what faith, Bishop, not just faith, in God, but faith in the God in me. Faith that the power of God can flow through me. Man, if you can get this, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna, I'm gonna unleash tonight the power of God. He's gonna resonate on the inside of your body. Come on, you ain't just been fasting and praying. Some of you are gonna catch this, and I'm telling you, at the end of this message, you're gonna walk out changed and transformed and ready for the kingdom to be exposed in the earth. All right? So, again, where many believers get it wrong is believing that the actions of prayer and fasting are themselves the sources of power. Fasting and prayer are not the sources of power. What? Fasting and prayer are not the sources of power. Bishop, I, I don't understand. What are you saying? What did Jesus say? The fasting and prayer are merely expressions of faith in God, that's what they are. When I fast, it is my expression that God, I believe what you said. When I pray, it is an expression that Father, I believe what you said about communication with you. I believe what you said when I fast about presenting my body, about making a sacrifice before you. I believe what your word. So these are expressions, they're not the power. Faith is the power, all right? Faith is the power. So his power is what accomplishes the will of God. I want to say that, all right? His power, God, his power, Christ's power, it is what, the Holy Spirit working in you, is what accomplishes the will of God for such as for demons to be removed. So when we fast, when we pray, it's not just in the physical manifestation, but what does your faith say about your fasting? What does your faith say about your praying or your prayer life? Come on, are you getting it? Hallelujah. Come on, I told you we're going to get loose tonight. Just stay with me, all right? Because I want to dive into this thing. I need you to understand what the Spirit of God has been trying to get us to walk in his word. Many of us are fasting, but we've been fasting and, and not understanding that our faith has to be uh, tied to our expression of fasting. Our faith, when I approach the throne, the Bible says, when you pray, pray believing. That's faith. I can't just pray, but I got to pray believing. And what is belief? Again, belief is not just a mere intellectual stance, but belief comes from a foundation, which is his word. He said, pray. That's why we pray. I pray because I believe what God's word said. Are we getting it tonight? 
I fast because I believe what God's word says. They are an expression of my belief. Come on, somebody type that out. Prayer and fasting are expressions of my belief. Come on, prayer and fasting are expressions of my belief. Let's move. So because of your unbelief, Jesus lays it to them. He lays it to them like this. Because of your unbelief, Jesus laid the inability of the disciples to cast out the demons at their unbelief, at their unbelief, to be successful in a battle against demonic spirits or strongholds. This is why they attack your mind. Come on. This is why the accuser of the brethren, while you are fasting and praying, trying to remove them, he starts talking about all of your mess ups. How can you cast me out? Don't you know you're a failure? Don't, that ain't God. That's a spirit. He's trying to plant the seeds in your mind that causes doubt to rise up in your heart, which causes your faith to crumble. So when you go to move him out, he says, what power do you have? And you go, you right. What power do I have? I messed up. Uh, but my confidence, my trust is not in my ability, but it is in the ability of God in me. The, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. If God said I can do it, then I can do it. If God said you can do it, you can do it. And he will do it through you. All right? So it's not us doing the work, but we are merely the channel in which God directs his power. We are merely the channel. Father, I surrender my hands. I surrender my mind. I surrender my tongue. I surrender God, my body. God, whatever you want to do to this child, I believe it. God, whatever you want to do to this, this, this man, this woman, I believe it. God, whatever you want to do to this situation, I believe it. God, whatever you want to do to this stronghold, I believe it. That's all God needs. All right. We're going to get into this thing. Come on, let's dive deeper. Come on, somebody type dive deeper, Bishop. Come on, man, we get this thing. All right? So, dive deeper. Let's dive. All right? So, again, to be successful in a battle against demons, there must be a trust in the Lord God who has complete authority over the demons. Um, I want to say this. I want to say this. <laughs> Uh, because sometimes we preach it and we teach it like God and the devil are on the same page. They like they they equals. Jesus and Satan ain't equals. Jesus and Satan ain't equals. You and I and Satan ain't equals. And if we ain't equals, we definitely know God ain't his equal. For God is above him. He was the creator of the angelic beings. That means that God created Lucifer. Lucifer is not his equal. In order for Lucifer to be his equal, then Lucifer would have had to be there when God created the angelic beings. But God created Michael. God created Gabriel. He created Lucifer. He created the angelic beings. So why do we make it seem like God our Lucifer is the equal to God. Why do we make it seem like the devil is God's match? When you step into the arena with any authority that I praise God, any authority, and you are a child of God and you know who your father is, you are going into battle like David said. Why are y'all so afraid? Have y'all lost y'all minds? Don't y'all know who our God is? Don't you know who our father is? If this uncircumcised Philistine wants a fight, he chose the wrong fight. Because the true authority is God. No matter what situation I'm facing, the true power, the true authority is my father. All right? Come on. So we can take a look at an example um, to really kind of get an example of what I'm talking about. Go to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 10 through 17. Quickly. Acts chapter 19, my Lord have mercy. Acts chapter 19, verse 10 through 17. Let's dive, let's dive. 
so we can get an understanding of this. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Arcel. That's right. Jesus is not. Listen, Satan is not Jesus equal. They are not equal. <laughs> Acts chapter 19, verse 10 through 17. So many of you know this story. It's the seven sons of Sceva, but I want to bring out something because I, as I say it, we have a gift and we try sometimes to do it in ourself. You know, many times I've, I've learned when I watch people and, and how it's taught now, uh, you got a lot of gifted folk. And so they go and try to cast out demons, but they try to cast out demons because they profit so-and-so. They try to cast out demons because they minister so-and-so, their bishop so-and-so, their uh, apostle so-and-so. But what did Jesus say was the qualifying factor of casting out demons? Why did the disciples say they could not? Why did Jesus say he, he tell them they couldn't cast it out? Had nothing to do with their title. It had to do with their belief. Not the gift, but the belief. So even those that are the gifted, come on, I want you to embrace this tonight. Forever be changed by this word. It has nothing to do with our gifts, our, 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 our own selves. And that is not what the demon is afraid of. Again, as I said earlier, when the demon saw Christ, he was not afraid of his physical body. It was what he saw because he's a spirit. It was what he saw behind the veil. Acts chapter 19, verse 10 through 17. In Acts chapter 19, in verse 10 through 17, and the Bible says, And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Watch how powerful belief is. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, because they believed in the servant of God. And he believed in the power of God that was flowing through him. And the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. This is why you see me use handkerchiefs. This is why you see me use different things. And sometimes I'll give out the handkerchiefs. Why? Because I understand how the power and the anointing flows. All right. Verse 13, then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcists took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. So, and these were the seven. In verse 14, it tells us who they were. And they were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priest, which did so. So these were not just mere ordinary men. These were people that went to the synagogue. You know, oh, I'm going to cast out demons because my daddy is the chief priest. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to cast out demons because I know Bishop Eric Reynolds. I'm going to cast out demons because I know Brother Terrell. I'm going to cast out demons because I know Bishop Manigault. No! These men decided to, to call on themselves. They, come on. Hey, you that got spirits, come on over here. And we want to cast out demons. We've been listening to this man, Paul, preach. And my God, we're going to cast out some demons today. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul is preaching. Verse 14, and there were seven sons of one keeper, a Jew and a chief priest, which did so. Verse 15, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, denotes intimacy. And Paul, I know, denotes intimacy. But don't know who you are. Why? They use the right name. So why did the name not have power? Wait! Let's get this thing. Again, I said, Jesus told them, because of your unbelief, they did not believe that God was powerful enough to work through them. Christ is now abiding in you and I. And this is where we fail. Our problem is... Here we are, just like these, 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 oh, well, I, I know Jesus um, through Bishop. I heard, man, he's been preaching and I see the miracles he do, but that don't know you know him. All right, we're going to get to this. All right. 
But who are you? Verse 15. Verse 16. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Again, they used the right name. But there was an issue. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them and all and the name of the Lord Jesus. My God, I feel like praising. And the name of the Lord Jesus, verse 17. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Somebody type, there's power in the name. Come on, there's power in the name. Now I'm gonna give you the greater revelation of that. There's power in the knowledge of the name because that's where many people fail. It's not just the name. The name has power, but if you don't know who he is, no power will come out of the name. It's just the name. All right? Ah, Bishop, uh, what are you talking about? Again, the problem is that they tried to believe in a Jesus they heard of. They tried to believe in a Jesus they heard of. Certified anointed apostle. Man, he was certified. He was anointed. He was an apostle. I heard of him. I heard of what he preached, but never took the time to get to know who Christ was for their self. This is like many people in the in, in, in the body of Christ now. Come on. Uh, I, I, oh, man, I wouldn't die there yet. I ain't going to die there yet. All right. But I've taught that the power that we receive comes from the knowledge. Come on. The power that we receive comes from the knowledge and intimacy that we possess, not merely what we have heard, not merely what we've heard, but from the knowledge and the intimacy that we possess with the name, with the person, with the understanding. All right. Let's go to scripture. Let's see what he's talking about. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19. Come on, let's dive. Let's dive. Matthew chapter 16. Come on, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19. Again, what's behind your veil? Come on, what's behind your veil? I don't know about you, but what lies behind the gates of this veil is the Lord Almighty. The reasons the demons tremble, the reason why the power exists is because behind this veil, this veil, this human body exists a deity, exists a Christ, exists the Lordship, and he operates his power through me because I'm yielding my body. A living sacrifice. All right? Let's die. Matthew 16, 13 through 19. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? Because we just said, not through just the name, but through the power and the knowledge and the intimacy. All right? Who do men say that I the son of man am? Verse 14. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others are Jeremiah's and one of the other prophets. Verse 15. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Come on, somebody type. Who is he? Who is he to you? Come on. Who is he to you? Come on. That's what he wants to know. I know what's been preached to you. I know what you grew up on. But who am I to you? That's the problem. We're running around and we cleave into messages. Well, God, you know, I heard that Jesus was that. And that's fine and that's dandy. But there comes a time where he asked the question, who am I to you? Who am I to you? Jesus says, but whom say ye that I am? Verse 16. I love it. I love it. I love it. Come on, Revelation. Power. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, verse 17, blessed, blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in 
heaven, not seminary, not school, not Bible study. This comes from a seeking of God. This comes because somebody got hungry and saw. And so the revelation who Christ is can be, uh, first the seed can be implanted by a preacher. The seed can be implanted for how can we hear uh, without a preacher and how can he preach except he be sent? So we can get the seed implanted, but what are you doing with the seed? What are you doing with the seed? My God had mercy. Yes, you heard about it, but what have you done with the seed? He said, who do men say that I the son of man am? Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. Verse 18, I say unto thee also that thou art Peter, Petros, and upon this rock, I will build. I'll develop my church. And upon this, this, this principle is what he's saying. I will develop and build my church and the gates and the gates and the gates of hell shall not prevail. No demon can come against it. No principality can come against it. I don't care what stronghold you got. Nothing shall be able to come against it. And I will give, verse 19, unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, as we study this scripture, it brings so much revelation. Oh, yes, it does. It brings so much revelation. Write this down. Write this down. The true revelation of Christ, the true revelation of Christ, his divinity can only be given by the Father. The true revelation of Jesus Christ, the true revelation of Christ can only be given by the Father. This is why plant the seed, walk away. Stop arguing with folk that don't know who he is. You trying to expound to them the Godhead, but Jesus just made it plain and simple. He says, the revelation of who I am was not given by man. This is not a flesh and blood revelation, but my father, which is in heaven. So the reality is that the true revelation of Christ can only be given by the father. All right. It can only be given by the father. So what are you talking about, Bishop? To those, to those that want to know who he is, to those that want to know who he is, he will make himself known. How do you know? I know because I've done it. One, you have to get hungry enough to search for him with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. Come on, Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. You know it and you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with what? All of your heart. Jeremiah 29 and 13. He says, I reveal myself to those who truly want to know who I am. See, uh, the seven sons of Sephora were not, uh, they weren't, they didn't want to know him. Come on, it's just like some of us today. We want to know the power, but we don't want to know the person. Amen. We want to know the power. Man, give me a taste of that power. That's why we 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 go. And, and, and we look for the gimmicks and so many people fall into this gimmick. Oh, shout, dance and pray and leave empty handed because you don't know who he is. Don't have a clue who he is. You went to church, shout, dance, but what did you learn about him? I'm going to take it even further. Again, he says, you will find me when you search for me with what? Some of your heart. Nope, 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 nope. When you get hungry enough, he says, you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. The second point comes in the revelation, right? Second point, which is this. And Jesus tells Peter that when you have the revelation and you have the faith in the son, because that's the revelation. When you have the revelation of the faith in the son, then the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. It didn't say the gates of hell won't try. Satan tried Jesus, but he couldn't prevail. Satan tried Jesus, 
but he couldn't prevail. So let me tell you this. Satan has been trying you. But let me tell you, he will not prevail. I know we keep asking why me? Why me? Why we? Why you? Because he knows who you are. Why you? Because he's afraid. So he's come to test and try to see if you're authentic and real. Somebody type, he will not prevail against me. Come on, the gates of hell will not prevail against me. Come on, the gates of hell will not prevail against me because I know who he is and because I know who I am. So the revelation, which is brought by the revelation that the father will give you through his spirit, when you know who he is, it causes you to be able to function in who you are. When you get to know who Christ is, this is that's the greatest revelation. Why not just God? Because the power flows through the sun. And the reason the power flows through the sun is because now the sun, see, it's one thing, This because this is what people do. God is the spirit. God is God. But when they looked at Christ, this is why even till the day, the, the, the Jews are still looking at him and saying, how? He's just a man. Because they don't understand the Godhead. But he's not just a man. And because he's not just a man, he gives me the ability and the power to function in the kingdom, which is here on earth. In the kingdom. I'm not looking up to heaven waiting to get there. There is a kingdom that exists here now. And he functions through me in the kingdom. So again, the problem is that you have heard him and they are intrigued. Many people are intrigued enough to go to a place called church. People hear, man, you know what? I want to go to church. They go to a place of worship and that's where many of us stop. We stop right there. And again, he says, you will find me. What? What? When I become a priority to you, when I become a priority to you, you're going to find me. When you make time for me on purpose, come on. When I become a priority in your life, can someone say it? When, 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 when I become a priority, that's when, when God becomes a priority, when Christ becomes a priority in my life, write this down. I will be intentional in getting to know him. I will be intentional. That's what it means to make him a priority. I will be intentional. I will be intentional with getting to know him. I'm not just merely going to go to a place called worship. Now I'm going to find out who he is for myself. He's given me the tools. He's given me, oh, praise God. Bishop is taught. Yes, he did. Amen. The spirit of God is taught through him. I've solved through my, his word what it says. But this year, I will make it a priority to be intentional about getting to know who he is. Come on, I will be intentional. But, 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 but Bishop, isn't my going to church being intentional? <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Is well, I don't understand. Isn't my going to church being intentional? Yes and no. Why do you say that? Because us going to church is a command. That's the first thing. Us going to church is a command. Forsake not to assemble. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. That's not me being intentional. That's only in one part. All right. That's only in one part. In my experience, it is in the times where it's not commanded. It's in the times where, where, where he ain't asking. Come on. Uh, and that's the sacrifice. When he ain't asking you to come, but you show up anyhow. When ain't no church, but you go to the house of worship just to walk around the parking lot. Or you, you go to the park or you go to a solitary place and you look for him. Jesus was intentional about being with the father. That's why the Bible says, and he went up into a mountain alone to pray. And he went up into a mountain alone to pray. And he went up into a mountain alone to pray. So 
Again, it's got to be a sacrifice. Think of it like this, right? Think of it like this. If you were in a relationship, if you were in a relationship, which would mean more to you? Which would mean more to you? Um, you go on a date because you planned it. You go on a date because you planned it. Or would you rather it be spontaneous or be a surprise? Would you rather the person surprise you? You know what? You wouldn't even anticipate going on a date. And you come and they, hey, you know what? Let's do something. I, I got something planned. Just, just come on. Come on. For those that are in relationships and you know what I'm talking about. I don't know about you, I, but I believe most would agree that it's the surprise for me. Come on. It's the surprise for me. Come on. It's the surprise for me. I don't know about you, but it's the surprise for me when I didn't ask for it, but you thought enough about me to do it without me asking for it. That's when it becomes intentional. That's when it becomes out of the ordinary. And again, I said Jesus rewards those that diligently. Ah, we ain't got Bible study tonight, but you know what? I'm going to have Bible study anyway. We ain't got prayer tonight, but I'm going to have prayer anyway. We ain't got fasting today, but we're going to fast anyway. I know because, see, what happens is after January, we go back to our same routine. After January, we go back to our same uh, our, our same mind frame. But I remember when Jesus spoke to us, uh, when we were at, uh, you know, um, the, the building and, 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 and when we were at this building, I remember the Lord said, one, be a church without walls. But then he said also that our fasting and our praying and our faith, he says now must become a lifestyle, not just something you merely do, uh, on, 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 on every January. That's it. Uh, and, and God, I'm not the rest of the time I ain't fasting and praying, uh, because, you know, I'm not worried about that. But when I diligently, don't that what, ain't that what the Bible says? For the Bible says he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. Come on. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When was the last time that you weren't uh, asked to pray? You weren't asked to study. You weren't asked uh, to fast or worship. But you said, you know what? I just want to know who he is. I want to know more about him. I know I got this appointment. I know I got this or I got that. But I'm going to put that on Paul. Man, you know what? My vacation this year ain't going to be about me going out and having fun. This vacation, I'm going to go and I'm going to find out who Christ is. I'm going to pull away. I just want to know you more. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So my fasting and praying, again, is a direct connection to my faith. Absolutely. My fasting and praying is a direct connection to my faith. Absolutely. What is the spirit of the Lord speaking to you? Come on, what is he saying to you right now? What is he saying to you right now? I need you to know that what you believe will either empower you or limit you. Somebody type that out. What I believe will either empower me or limit me. I need you to understand that. What I believe will either empower me or limit me. And this is what Jesus brought out to them. Even to the point, even to the point, because there's power in the name of Jesus. When you believe, there's power in the name of Jesus when you believe because people run around talking about there's power in the name of Jesus. But what Jesus? When I believe, then there's power in the name of Jesus. When I believe that he is the Messiah, when I believe that he is the Christ. Is that scripture? Absolutely. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. Watch. And these signs. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that have a title. No, 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 no. And these signs shall follow them that are gifted. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. I love it right there. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. Do you believe in the name? I love it. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. <laughs> directly collected. Come on. Directly connected. Right to the foundational scripture that we came from. Did I not just tell you? He said, what they asked, why couldn't we cast out demons, Lord? He says, man, you do believe, but you don't believe that I'm able to work through you. You don't believe my power can throw through, can flow through you. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Watch this. And they shall speak with new tongues. For the scripture signs follow belief. Again, signs follow belief. Signs follow belief. This is how I know whether you are a believer or not. Signs follow belief. Not this belief that the world has given to the church, not this belief that the church has adopted, but what you believe will either empower you or it will limit you. What are you being limited from, from your belief? Come on, some of us need to say it just like the man. Father, I believe, but teach me how to believe. Teach me how to believe. Father, I believe, but help my unbelief. So Jesus says, in my name, in my name, Jesus, demons are cast out. And because of their belief, they were able to speak with new tongues. So yes, your tongues, which is your heavenly language, is also affected, watch, by how and what I believe. By how and what I believe. This is why I believe there has to be a teaching. There has to be an understanding. And Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 through 29, and we're closing. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 through 29, and we're closing. Come on, we having a good time tonight? Amen, amen. Matthew chapter 28. Our Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 through 29. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 through 29. Watch Jesus teach this thing. Um, they were asking him where his authority and his power came from. And Jesus says, but if I cast out devils, how? By the spirit of God. If I cast out devils, by the spirit of God. Jesus is even given a revelation here. He's saying, watch, just as we said earlier, it's not me. I'm, I am merely the conduit. I, when I lay my hands on you, I am merely the channel in which the Holy Spirit is flowing. I am merely the channel. My faith, hallelujah, is that connection that's bringing what is in the spirit into the now. This is why God needs you. This is why God needs me. Come on, that's revelation. Uh, for he does it by spirit, but what brings it into action now is your faith. And this is what Jesus was saying unto them. When you believe, all things are possible to them that believe. He says in verse 28, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. 29, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. Jesus, again, himself is giving us the understanding. How are demons cast out? Not by his flesh. He said, man, y'all think that I'm doing this thing on my own? Wrong. But the spirit of God abiding in me. Because I have the revelation. Because he abides in me. And I abide in him. I'm going to lay hands. They're going to recover. I'm going to cast these spirits out. Because I know who I am. Come on, somebody type that. I know who I am. Come on, I know who I am in Christ. I know who I am in Christ. And if you don't know, type, you know what? I'm going to find out who I am in Christ. This is the year I'm going to find out who I am in Christ. Make that your declaration. Make that your, listen, this year, I know what the church has said about me. I know what people have said about me. I know what my family has said about me. But this year, the veil will be removed because I'm going to find out who I am in Christ. 
If you believe that, I want you to give him praise. Come on, right where you are. Come on, right where you are. Right where you are. I want you to begin to give him praise. We're going to go into a prayer. You know, I pray that you have enjoyed this Bible study. Again, he said, watch. When you get to know who I am in you, when you get to know the revelation of who I am, the gates of hell will not be able to prevail. This is going to be the year. This is going to be the year. I know who I am in Christ. And the power of God will move. It's going to flow through me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this word. We thank you, God, for this moment in time, this, this awakening moment, God, for many that will get to understand God. It's not merely the fasting and the praying. That's not the power. But the power comes from the faith for even prayer and fasting are extensions of our faith. And we will release our faith to believe it all. I believe I can make it 21 days. I believe I can make it 40 days. I believe. You will move through me. You said unto him that is able to keep me from falling. Father, I yield to you today. Whether I failed or whether I've, I've, I've been successful. I'm giving it over to you. Move in me. Breathe in me. Have your being in me. I invite you in to be the Lord over my life. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation that I have of you. To those, God, that need the revelation as they seek you like never before. Open up the revelation. Whatever God has been hindering them from the power of the revelation. Father, I decree and declare it shall be removed. I send the angels forth now to remove those obstacles, those blinders. Where you said the God of this world have blinded. God, I bind the enemy right now. And I suffer him not to return unto them. In the name of Jesus. And we give you praise right now. We give you glory. Because we believe it's done. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Don't just jump off. But I want you to go into praise and worship with me. Come on, I don't know about you. But I want to be a conduit of heaven. That's right. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Oh, only you can satisfy Come on, you don't want to miss this Saturday. Come out and worship with us. We will be in the building. Looking forward to fellowshipping and being with you. Come on, greet your brothers and sisters in Christ. And let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, somebody type, I will draw from you, Lord. Thank you. 